and I don't know if you have some questions because I have some questions for each presenter. And I will start with Dr. Bullet. Dr. Bullet, first question. Uh, you use uh, hydrosection in all cases first. Yes. Second, uh, you use only local anesthesia or you, you, you use also uh, some kind of sedation? And the uh, last question. Uh, you you perform all your case by yourself, or in some cases you work together with a hair neck surgeon and or ENT surgeon. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, uh, I use uh, in every case hydrodissection, uh, but uh, it depended on the. Uh, diameter of the thyroid nodule. In some cases, I use 20 cc. In some uh, cases, I use 100 cc of uh, fluid. But uh, as we know, uh, thyroid thermal ablation is a new technique. Therefore, uh, I won't uh, avoid uh, fr uh, from complications. Uh, maybe uh, if I use hydrodissection, the procedure time is more longer. That is a more safe procedure. Therefore, I prefer for every time uh, uh, and in the beginning, in the learning uh, curve, uh, that every uh, operator must uh, use hydrodissection. The second uh, answer is I use only local anesthesia. I don't use pseudoanalgesia uh, because it is a minimal invasive procedure, uh, but Sometimes very uh, some uh, people have very anxiety. I speak with them, but I only use local anesthesia. And uh, the third question is, I work, we have a committee in my uh, training hospital, endocrinology and uh, endocrine surgery. We work together and uh, we choose the patients uh, at the committee. Uh, not only what the patient wants. Uh, okay. Yes, I understand. Uh, it, the indication is very important. And uh, I teach, uh, I think, 10 or 15 uh, heat and <laughs> uh, thyroid uh, thermal ablation in my country. They come Turkish uh, country. But it's a new area. Uh, in some cases, we do thyroid thermal ablation. In some cases, we do thyroid embolization. In some cases, I help uh, with ultrasound in the surgery to the uh, general. We are a team every time. We... Yes, I understand. And have you trained any surgeon to do this, this procedure in Turkey? Yes, 15 surgeons, 15 doctors and, uh, come to me. They are, doing now, they are doing now this. Uh, in Turkey, I know that five uh, Two, three general surgery, general surgery, and two hidden neck surgery do this procedure. Very nice. Thank you very much for okay. yeah. Dr. Edivelt, and I know that you are the CEO of a training course in Sao Paulo, a very, very good uh, program. And uh, with your experience, what's your opinion about? I think. Uh, I saw many uh, 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 participants in this uh, meeting uh, are new in ablation and want to, to learn this kind of technique. And in your opinion, what's the learning curve for ablation, uh, thyroid ablation? And uh, when you, ca you can say, now I know how to do this procedure. And uh, I think it's very important to Newton. And the other question, uh, what's your opinion about the training in ultrasound? Because you know that in Brazil, many of surgeons didn't have this, this training. And to start ablation, you need first to learn how to perform ultrasound. So with your experience in teaching this kind of procedure, uh, what do you think about? Well, uh, thank you for your question, Fernando because uh, the most uh, important part to, to, to perform 
with, uh, with confidence RFA is to know, uh, to have a strong background in, in ultrasound. It's the most important part. To perform uh, uh, RFA confidently, you, it's mandatory you, you have a, 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 a knowledge on ultrasound neck anatomy. It's the as bullet showed in his uh, wonderful presentation. Um, uh, uh, that's why uh, uh, many specialists, not only uh, surgeons, uh, 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 perform RFA. Uh, uh, we have in our in our uh, training courses uh, the, the most most of the time uh, we we focus many of our, our training in ultrasound anatomy, how to perform, how, what, which is important to see. And, and then you go to the second step that's to perform final needle aspiration. And then you perform uh, RFA. These, these are, in my opinion, the three steps to perform confidently RFA. Uh, ultrasound anatomy, uh, and to know how to perform uh, final needle biopsy aspiration, and then with this, with this background, you go to perform uh, thermal ablation, uh, RFA uh, or uh, even microwave. Um, and then the learning curve, if you have uh, this background, it is not a huge, uh, you don't need a huge number of cases. With eight cases, uh, you, 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 I suppose you have a good, uh, a, a good background to perform uh, all the cases, because the most important is not to, to start with a huge case. You need to, to select at the beginning uh, uh, small nodules, uh, the correct patient, uh, the correct uh, a nodule. Uh, uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, this is the most, most important. I don't know the bullet and Carlos' opinions, but in my opinion, the, the most important when you start to perform these thermal ablations is the correct selection of the patient. I agree completely with you. The, the, the right selection is the key of uh, uh, to learn how to do a very good ablation. And, uh, but you know how the things uh, work in Brazil, Erivelta. If you don't know the procedure, the procedure is not good. You know that it's like this in Brazil, unfortunately. Man. This is a new procedure. And many of high neck surgeons in Brazil, in our age, don't don't know how to perform ultrasound. And you, I know that you have in your group a very group, a very good uh, 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 radiologist, Dr. Heihau. So uh, I asked, I said to everybody, if you don't know how or you are insecure to do ultrasound, please do your, the procedure with someone that know how to do. Don't say uh, bad things about the procedure because you don't know how to perform. This is a new paradigm and uh, is a, a chant game. And you know this, you have a huge experience. So uh, tell me about uh, uh, work with a, a radiologist in all procedures, uh, because me and Carlos don't do this. And I, I would like to know about your experience. Well, um, let's let's go. Uh, I started to perform ultrasound in my office many many years ago, and uh, when Alexa, music, Alex, do de Calibre no Amazon. Sorry, Alexa, para. Sorry, sorry, my Alexa. Alexa, para. My Alexia don't, uh, wants to participate in our in our discussion. <laughs> Um, 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 uh, what I was saying. Um, <laughs> about your song, you perform it for many years. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Alex, uh, the question. <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, when we start the procedure uh, in Brazil, we start together. Me and Dr. Rao uh, came from uh, South Korea and have uh, in, have our training together, and then we. When we came back to Brazil, we decided to do the first procedures together. And then uh, uh, nowadays we, we do, uh, uh, we, we keep doing together many of our procedures because 
we uh, uh, we have, you know, uh, I, I will tell my experience and. Um, uh, as, you, as, you, as you told, Fernando, uh, thermal ablation is a game changer. So we need to be very, very efficient uh, when we perform thermal ablations because we need to prove to yes. our colleagues that it's a good procedure. And uh, uh, that's why we do at the beginning, uh, uh, we perform uh, RFA together. And in, in another interesting point, is that at the beginning, you don't receive, I, I don't know about it an uh, uh, experience, but when we started, we don't, we don't, uh, 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 the, the, our colleagues uh, don't refer for us the yeah. small nodules. Usually they refer the huge goiters, yeah, the the patients the that have yeah. some risks for, for surgery. So we need to be a very, very efficient. And that's why we perform until now, uh, many uh, ablations together. Of course, uh, uh, the average ablation, it's easy to perform alone and we perform uh, many ablations uh, in, uh, in, uh, alone. But when we have a challenging case, for instance, that, uh, that uh, neck metastasis, uh, uh, we perform together. And it's interesting, another point, if you allow me, uh, it's, it's different how the surgeons see and how the radiologists see. And we can, uh, when we uh, uh, mix these visions, it's better for the patient. This is the point, Roberto. I think you have to have a union, not a competition between surgeons and radiologists. And this is, I'm, I'm saying this because it's very common to, have, to, to, to happen in Brazil, some kind of these things. So, and the last question, Alberto, because I saw the vision of Dr. Gula, and I would like to see your vision about sedation. Use sedation for your patients or just a local anesthesia? Well, just, uh, just let me, uh, uh, regarding uh, your last questions, it's important to say that not only surgeons and uh, radiologists could perform RFA. We have uh, many endocrinologists. Yes, of that, course, of course. That, that of perform. Course. Uh, RFA in a very good way. It's important to, to point this. Uh, we, uh, uh, there is no, uh, uh, this procedure don't, don't belong to any uh, uh, specialty. It's uh, a, any doctor. Uh, it's interesting too. When I do my master class in NSU, we, we have in our master class ENT, general surgeons, head and neck, radiologists, and endocrinologists. Just to, to, to finish. And uh, regarding the, the, the use of uh, sedation, uh, we use in, do we do, do, do uh, 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 you know, uh, we have some different patients and when the patients have some anxiety regarding the procedure to have a, 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 a big needle inside his neck, uh, uh, we, we prefer for majority of our patients to, to use uh, a, a light sedation, very okay. uh, light sedation, okay. together and with the, local anesthesia. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Velto. I have, we have some questions, but I would like to uh, ask some uh, thing about uh, to Dr. Carl Lang before. Uh, Dr. Lang, uh, uh, you are one of the uh, unique Perinex surgeon with experience in both uh, methods, uh, microwave and uh, RFA. And in your uh, truly opinion, what's the difference? Which do you like more? I don't know if you have any experience. And in my experience, uh, the microwave seems to be much faster and for large nodules. And, uh, and with less energy. But uh, I would like to, to, to hear your opinion about both methods and the, what do you prefer more? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Fernando. Yeah, you are right. Both methods are effective, but microwave is faster, deliver more energy in a, uh, in a wider field than radio frequency ablation. 
patient. I think that the key is to select the uh, uh, correct patient for each method. Uh, since uh, microwave ablation is new here, we are starting our cases. Uh, we need to re rely in, in our colleagues with more experience. For example, nodules with more cystic regions can be more uh, selected for microwave ablation. Uh, you have uh, the same experience that, that, that I have, we see uh, these mixed nodules reducing very fast in a few uh, days or months, uh, then comparing with uh, radiofrequency ablation uh, uh, in our older cases. Uh, and uh, I think the, 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 the beautiful, uh, the beauty of this thing is to have two tools to try to apply to different cases. Nowadays, for larger nodules and nodules with higher percentage of cystic uh, portions, I would choose microwave ablation. And for uh, lesser, minor nodules, more solid nodules, RFA. But both methods can be applied in, in, in every patient with this kind of difference. Uh, I think that uh, we are uh, from now starting to perform more and more microwave ablation uh, to enlarge our experience and from six months, 10 months from now to have a huge experience like we have in RFA to uh, make our own comparisons like the literature uh, is doing now. But I, I like both. I, I love both. If you give me anywhere, <laughs> I like. But I love the fast of the microwave, uh, cyber wave. I, 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 I really very impressed with the results, the quick results, and the uh, lesser complaint of the patients during the procedure. It's notice, noticeable. The patient have much more, much less pain during the procedure with microwave than the RFA. And another question is about cost. Uh, we'll talk all, all the time about cost in medicine, okay? And uh, we are, uh, me and you, we have a private clinic that you can perform uh, microwave ablation in the clinic. And in your opinion, and uh, when you need, it, 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 it's possible just use a uh, 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 outpatient or hospital outpatient, or you you should. Uh, I don't know if you think it's more comfortable to do this in a, a, a hospital environment, because we know that uh, nowadays the insurance company don't pay the procedure for the doctor in Brazil. So mm -hmm. we have to, to decrease our costs to give mm -hmm. to the patient the opportunity to, the, to this procedure. Yes, uh, I think it's uh, feasible to perform an, uh, an out-hospital basis, a day clinic or a, a clinic basis, uh, if you select correctly the patient. You, you won't put an older patient or a, a, a greater neck patient or a very complicated patient uh, outside the hospital. But for most of the patients that look for us uh, for this procedure that are younger women with uh, visible nodules with no uh, comorbidities associated and with our, our technique using a very reliable, reliable anesthesiologist with a mild sedation, a conscious sedation, we can perform easily in the clinic. Almost all cases, yes. Almost all okay. And uh, we have some question uh, about uh, uh, from Dr. Mohamed Fouad. Uh, thanks for a lot of great presentation, really very uh, fruitful. I have a question at which Chihad's grade you do FNA commonly? And Dr. Erivelto and Dr. Bullet, when you do uh, uh, fine needle aspiration, in which Chihad do you do this? Normally, uh, uh, at the, if the nodule uh, diameter is uh, about 2.5 centimeter and at Chihad's three, you must do a fine needle biopsy. But in the clinical practice, uh, if I, uh, is, as a thermal ablation candidate, I do for every patient uh, fine needle aspiration before, uh, because 
it is uh, for me uh, for medical legal important therefore i do if i uh, want to take my ablation i do every patient's final aspiration biopsy before ablation dr elivelt your microphone uh, I understood that the question is when to perform a, a, a FNA for, for regarding the TIGAS. Yes. Uh, the, the current guidelines, uh, as the Korean guidelines and these guidelines that we published recently, recommend that uh, you uh, should have at least two, uh, two uh, benign. Uh, uh, final needle aspiration uh, showing uh, uh, Bethesda 2 or, or at least one, uh, one final needle aspiration uh, if you have uh, uh, yeah. if you have uh, uh, ultrasound with benign uh, features. Uh, uh, another uh, option in selected cases is also to perform a core needle biopsy if you have some doubts. And it's another point to discuss because uh, if you have a, uh, 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 a Bethesda tree, uh, a Bethesda tree with uh, uh, a b uh, benign uh, features on the ultrasound, you, uh, um, a core needle biopsy could be a good option. By other side, this, uh, these guidelines also recommend if you have uh, uh, a huge TIRADS, TIRADS 5, for instance, with a uh, uh, benign final needle aspiration, it's not the best option regarding the size of the nodule to perform uh, thermal ablations. It's, best, it's better to refer these patients for surgery. Okay, and for all speakers, do you still perform two final needle aspirations before the procedure? Or just one? Carlos? Uh, most of cases, two needle aspirations. Only one if I had uh, a very spongy form, very benign, uh, and very circumscribed uh, nodes of the thyroid. Dr. Bullet? Yes. Uh, it's the same with Dr. Carlos Lane. Uh, I do only one fine needle aspiration. If it's a suspicious nodule, uh, then maybe two, but usually one. Dr. Edivelt? It's, it's the same. If we have benign features at the ultrasound, just one final needle. OK, uh, another question for, from Dr. Mohamed. Well, for malignant lesions, do you need a scintigraphy or PET-CT to detect active post-procedure as a follow-up or just depend on ultrasound features uh, and Doppler vascularity detection. And if you follow up with uh, any, uh, just with ultrasound for malignant lesions, or if you use uh, another uh, image method as uh, CT or, 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 or PET-CT. Dr. Bullet, what's your opinion? Uh... Normally, we uh, the follow up we don't use scintigraphy or anything, uh, and uh, if I do papillary carcinoma, malignant lesion, uh, I try to do uh, below twelve millimeters, and uh, that they that have not uh, metastatic lesions, and in these cases uh, after ablation. Uh, the, uh, I do not the follow up, the follow up to the endocrinist or the uh, nuclear tip, uh, nuclear medicines. But I, I know that they do it only with uh, uh, washouts sometimes. Uh, we do some uh, tiroglobin washouts and uh, only with ultrasound, not with scintigraphy. Okay, Dr. Lane. Since we performed uh, ablation for microcarcinomas less than one centimeter, I don't see the needing of any other methods than ultrasound correctly use it to follow up these patients. I agree, Dr. Erivelt, your opinion? 
Uh, the most uh, the most important is the correct selection of the patient. Yes. If, if you have any doubt that the, the disease can spread, it's better you don't perform RFA. But uh, as Bullet and Carlos already said, uh, it's not necessary any uh, a special image exam uh, beside uh, a, a, a ultrasound. So. Select correctly your patient. Especially in the hands of some uh, specialists like you. And so we have a large experience like the, the bullet. I think ultrasound is a very great. Uh, yes. uh, uh, so uh, we almost end our meeting, but I think we, I have uh, time for one more question for all speakers. And uh, it, this is a controversy. What what's your your cutoff for indications of uh, ablation, any kind of ablation for uh, primary malignant nodules and thyroid? I, I mean the size and the size of lymph nodes, a number of lymph nodes to indicate uh, ablation in treatment of neck metastasis. I will start with Dr. Bullet. Uh, Bullet, please. Uh, in my country, uh, with, and what I uh, read on the guidelines, uh, the maximum diameter is 12 millimeters. Uh, I try under make under 12 millimeters, and uh, uh, the size of the uh, malignant, uh, the size of the metastasis is every time uh, not only on the left node, uh, both on the uh, liver metastasis. Uh, the cutoff is three centimeters. We, we never see three centimeters. Uh, metastasis uh, is very rare, but uh, under the three centimeters, uh, lymph node metastasis, we can do ablation. And also, I if I uh, do uh, lymph uh, node metastasis ablation, I use uh, a very good hydro dissection. Okay, Dr. Rizal. Oh, I have a limited experience in, in treating uh, lymph node mats, uh, but once again, it's a question of uh, uh, case selection. Uh, the, the best treatment, of course, is surgery. But uh, for instance, that patient that I, I show that we, uh, that we made uh, RFA for, uh, for uh, uh, lymph node mats. It was a patient that was uh, underwent two surgeries and she has just one mat. Uh, this this, this mat uh, was confirmed by two experienced radiologists and the patient was, I, I don't want you to, to, to have another surgery, please do something else. So I, I talked with her and explained to her that uh, it's, uh, uh, the surgery would be the best, but she, 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 she chose to refuse surgery and do RFA. And the result that you know, it's, it's very good. Very good. Dr. Lay. For malignant disease, papillary carcinoma, uh, until one centimeter. And for lymph node metastasis, I follow all, all the, the, the guidelines and uh, single metastasis, the mitral single metastasis, with no uh, signs of invasion of uh, adjacent structures that can be dissected with uh, saline or dextrosis. I, I, I emphasize this because it's a new technology. If you over indicate uh, this technology, you can. Uh, have very bad results, and uh, this is not good for us that uh, are enthusiasts about ablation. Okay, so uh, Erivelto has just written a guideline, and I think it's very, very important in nowadays to 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 follow this kind of guidelines because we see some cases in Brazil that's. Unfortunately, it's not a very good indication. And in your, in your hospital, Carlos, you know that you have a case with uh, 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 more than four centimeters that was indicated uh, 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 RFA. So I have, we have a, have a little bit of careful in, our, in these days 
and in, in, in not over indicate the, the technique. So I finish here. I would like to thank all presenters, all speakers, these wonderful uh, presentations. And uh, it was a very good pleasure and a very good, uh, great honor to participate in the I still I am and uh, a very enthusiastic uh, 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 surgeon with this new technology. And uh, I think we're going to have a very good future about this. Thank Please. you very much, Dr. Walder. Thank you. Um, I, I know we we are running out of time, but I just have one last question, if you don't mind. No, of course, it's a pleasure. Yeah, Dr. Walder mentioned, uh, asked about the learning curve of the, this ablation technology. So actually, I was wondering uh, if a surgeon or an endocrinologist who doesn't, you know, has much uh, knowledge about ultrasound and anatomy or the FNA, if they want to do the ablation, how long do you think it will take for this uh, endocrinologist or surgeon to learn the ultrasound skills and FNA to be able to do the thermal ablation? I, I think it's two different things. One thing is know how to perform a very good ultrasound. And I think the surgeon uh, won't be a, 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 a radiologist. The other thing is to learn how to perform ultrasound in thyroid, okay? It's not mm -hmm. so difficult. You have to, to train a little bit, but to know uh, how to see the nodule, the vascularization, uh, the anatomy is not so difficult. So it's different to be a radiologist and to know how to perform ultrasound in thyroid, okay? So okay. in my opinion, if you have a... So um, a curse like Erivel to do in three or four days. How how long Erivel to for ultrasound? Uh, our our master class is uh, three days. Three days, okay. and you know all the 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 key points points to do ultrasound. So you have to buy ultrasounds, uh, train in your patients, and I think the learning curve to do a good. Uh, ultrasound, thyroid ultrasound is not so difficult. Of course, I will. I won't be never uh, a, a radiologist. I won't have never the experience of a, a radiologist for ultrasound. But to do the procedure, I think the learning curve is not so difficult. And, and if you training a little bit of ultrasound and start your procedure with someone who did this before and have experience is not so difficult to, to learn. I, Erivelto has much more experience in ultrasound than me. I started ultrasound three or four years ago, okay? But for me, it's enough. And I don't think that's a huge learning curve. It's much more difficult to do robot. Cial endoscopy is much more difficult. I think uh, ablation and ultrasound it depends of the, the surgeon, the endocrinologist. If you want to, to learn, it's easy to learn, okay? Okay, okay, thank you very much. That's very informative. Thank you. So um, that's, that means our session is coming to an end. And uh, thank you very much for uh, your participation and uh, the audience, if you have any questions or you want to receive the participation certificate, uh, you know where to find us. And we, um, we really appreciate all our experts for their excellent work today. It's been a very informative session and I'm sure that we will be having more cooperation in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you all. Um, have a good night in Brazil. And, uh, and have a good morning great. in China. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank it you. was a pleasure. Dr. Bullet, nice to meet you. It was a very good pleasure to thank have you. a new friend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Like Doctor Carlos, Doctor Enrico Bellivosi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Dana. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.